For many people, Iguanodon was quite possibly the first dinosaur they were introduced to. To this day, in fact, it remains one of the few dinosaurs to be at the center of an entire blockbuster film plot outside of Jurassic Park, in the form of Disney's aptly named Dinosaur, released in the year 2000. The animated film focuses on a male iguanodon, raised in isolation from his species, who sets out on an adventure to relocate his adopted family after a catastrophic meteor strike. On the way, he meets a whole host of other dinosaur species, in what would be many people's first meetings with paleontology and dinosaurs in general. The film was a success at the box office, but received reviews that were more on the mixed side, as a result of the rushed feeling of its writing and characters. With the rise of our new paleontological renaissance, in recent years of study, the film has also come under an entirely new kind of scrutiny by dinosaur experts. Despite its nostalgic value, it is wholly inaccurate to its representation of prehistoric life. The film shows a series of different animals, nearly all of whom lived at different times and places in the fossil record, and many of them don't hold up scientifically by modern standards of study. Many of these geographical and biological errors were known to be wrong at the time, and mainstream news outlets even reported on the inaccuracies shortly after the film was released. Today, we will be taking a look at the life and natural history of the center of the film, Iguanodon, examining how it really lived and behaved. This is a journey that will see us take a trip back to the early Cretaceous, over 100 million years ago. Sit back and relax as we meet this incredible reptile and the world it called home. Iguanodon was an ornithopod dinosaur, a member of a very successful group of ornithischians that would grow to become some of the most common and diverse groups of herbivores across the Cretaceous. Many studies on Iguanodon are based on the type species Iguanodon bernisartensis, but other species are known. These are Iguanodon anglicus, a dubious species, but actually the second dinosaur ever to be discovered in 1829, and Iguanodon galvensis, discovered in 2015. Iguanodon bernisartensis is by far the most well-known and lived across Europe, namely England, Spain, and Germany, in the Baremian and Aptian stages of the early Cretaceous period. The dinosaur thrived between roughly 126 to 122 million years ago, and has gone through many changes over the years, as our understanding of the dinosaur has evolved. Once depicted as a sluggish, iguana-like monster, we now know that this dinosaur walked on long legs and may have even been capable of walking bipedally for periods of time when it wasn't on all fours. Iguanodon was a very large herbivore, capable of growing up to 11 meters, yet most specimens were between 9 and 10. It likely weighed over 4 metric tons and was an animal that only the most well-adapted of predators could tangle with when it eventually reached its full adult size. Not only could Iguanodon use its size and weight as a means of defense, it also boasted some of the most impressive weaponry in the ornithopod world, thumb spikes. We will discuss more about these features later on in the video, but these sharp, conical structures on the end of each thumb would have made Iguanodon a vicious adversary when it came to defending itself from attack. Moreover, the arms of Iguanodon were very large and bulky for an ornithopod, the weight of which was balanced on its three middle fingers, while the thumb spike and fifth finger were held clear off the ground. Iguanodon's backbone and tail were strengthened by the presence of ossified tendons running along the length of the spine. These structures changed throughout the life of Iguanodon individuals, starting off as flexible tendon, but gradually ossifying to inflexible bone when the animal reached adulthood. 
As for the skull, these animals' heads were tall and narrow in structure, and their mouths tipped with tough beaks, with teeth at the back of the mouth. The dinosaur's teeth were replaceable as it continued to feed on tough vegetation throughout the course of its life, but it could only replace one at a time, as opposed to the related hadrosaurs, which could continuously replace their teeth with reserve supplies. Scientists have proposed that Iguanodon may have possessed cheeks in order to store food or chew it, due to the fact that the teeth were so far back in the mouth. While the Iguanodon we are focusing on in today's video lived in Europe, remains that have been assigned to the genus have also been unearthed in parts of Africa, Asia, and even North America. It was a very successful and widespread species in its time. Iguanodon discoveries date back to the 1820s, possibly as far back as 1820, before even Queen Victoria sat upon the English throne. There is some debate as to how the discoveries were first kicked off. Some believe that Mary Ann Mantell was the first to discover Iguanodon teeth in the forests of Sussex, England. But her husband, paleontologist Gideon Mantell, is often credited with the find. These teeth, however, were likely not the first iguanodon bones known to science, as Mantell is reported to have unearthed several larger iguanodon bones at Whiteman's Green Quarry in 1820. These bones were first thought to belong to a species of huge prehistoric crocodilian, and were dismissed as such, only putting two and two together when the teeth were found later. The teeth were later presented to several well-known scientists at the Royal Society of London, including William Buckland, Charles Lyell, and George Cuvier. But they were dismissed once more, believed to belong to a large fish or mammal. Eventually, William Buckland would be convinced in 1824 that Mantell's find belonged to a herbivorous dinosaur, after he formally described his own Megalosaurus noting the similarities between these dinosaur teeth and the teeth of a modern-day iguana. As such, the name Iguanodon was issued, meaning iguana tooth. Initial studies claimed Iguanodon was an 18-meter behemoth, but this has now been massively scaled down with advanced methods of study. When further Iguanodon remains were unearthed from a quarry in Maidstone, Kent, the infamous thumb spike was unearthed. Mantell, when reconstructing the dinosaur, erroneously believed this to be some kind of horn and placed it upon the dinosaur's snout. In these early years, the animal was also depicted as a very sluggish reptilian monster with a long, dragging tail and a crocodile-like head. Richard Owen, a controversial paleontologist, took this one step closer and depicted these animals to be almost elephantine in their bodies, proposing that God must have made them mammalian, disregarding early evolutionary science. Mantell would eventually come to realize that Iguanodon was not in reality the animal early paleontologists had reconstructed, but instead one that was comparatively slender, one that walked on longer legs. He unfortunately died just before the famous Crystal Palace Park dinosaur sculptures were constructed by Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins in South London, and his last discoveries were not contributed to the design of the large, brutish monsters that adorn the park today. Visitors to the park can still see the Iguanodon sculpture there today, represented in its earliest form standing alongside the likes of Megalosaurus and Hylaeosaurus. With further discoveries and decades of important research taking place on the remains of Iguanodon, paleontologists have begun to paint quite a different picture of this large yet hardly monstrous animal. Today, Iguanodon is typically depicted by paleoartists as a tall, well-developed ornithopod, one that was firmly herbivorous, with no horn on its nose and a long, straight tail that was held out behind it. 
The short, thick neck of an iguana is now absent, replaced by one that would have helped it maneuver its head to select the best quality vegetation to feed upon. Its mouth is now tipped in a beak, and it has been colored taking inspiration from surviving large herbivores, such as antelopes and giraffes. As scientists learn more about this animal, Iguanodon can be reconstructed in a more accurate light still. The Iguanodon populations of Europe, specifically those in England, would have lived in a very different world to the one we live in today. The environment at the time would have been much warmer, leading to the development of lush, humid forests and floodplains. England had not yet split from the mainland of Europe, and as such, a wide variety of animals discovered from several rock deposits are known to have shared this prehistoric world with Iguanodon. Iguanodon was one of the largest known herbivores of this time, living alongside other ornithischians like the much smaller Hypsilophodon, the closely related Mantellosaurus and Valdosaurus, and ankylosaurians such as Polycanthus. One of the only herbivores larger than Iguanodon from this paleo environment was Pelorosaurus, a huge species of titanosaur that could potentially reach 24 meters in length. Amidst the forests and floodplains, predators also lurked. Alongside Iguanodon lived its potential predators, the Carcharodontosaurian Neovenador, and the basal tyrannosaurid Eotyrannus. One of the most famous dinosaurs from this time lived here too, Baryonyx, the famous fish-eating spinosaur with long curved claws used for slashing fish from the water as it waded through lakes. The floodplains gave way to rivers and lakes that teemed with prehistoric life, such as fish, turtles, lizards, amphibians, sharks, and arthropods, some of which were snatched up by pterosaurs flying overhead. Amongst the pterosaurs associated with this point in prehistory are the likes of Istiodactylus, Whitea, and Colchicephalus. Iguanodon is thought to have been capable of handling particularly tough plant matter, as evidenced by the presence of a strong beak and replaceable teeth in its mouth. There have been no hard discoveries to show us exactly what type of plants Iguanodon used to enjoy, but based on the plant matter present in its home at the time, it can be suggested. Iguanodon is thought to have fed on a mixture of cycads, conifers, and horsetails, but this is not definite. It is thought to have used the fifth finger on its hand to dig through vegetation, searching for the best parts to consume. Speaking of the animal's hands, Iguanodon's thumb spike has actually been the subject of much scientific debate over the years. It was first suspected to be a horn, something that was eventually disregarded when more complete specimens were discovered. The most commonly considered theory as to why this dinosaur had a thumb spike was to defend itself from predators. If Iguanodon faced an attack from a theropod, such as Neovenador, for example, it could rear up on its hind legs and force the thumb into the theropod's weak points, rendering it severely injured or even dead. If it wasn't used for defensive purposes, there is actually another theory. The spike may have been used to break into food items that were too tough for the animal's beak, possibly seeds or the stones of fruits. The fact that Iguanodon's forelimbs were much shorter than its hind limbs led to the initial theory that this was an animal that would exclusively walk in a bipedal stance, with its tail dragging behind it on the ground. We now know that this was very far from the truth. Iguanodon could not have used its tail as a tripod, as it would literally have broken under the unachievable posture. Iguanodon's tail was ossified and stiff, and could not move up and down. Rather, this was almost certainly an animal that would spend most of its time on all fours, possibly walking bipedally while still lifting its tail off the ground for short distances, perhaps to escape predators. 
such a speed would not have been reached while the animal was walking on all fours. Following Iguanodon's discovery, it was assigned to its own clade, Iguanodontia. These animals lived across the Middle Jurassic to their eventual extinction in the Late Cretaceous period. The Hadrosauriforms are a member of this clade, which includes all the duck-billed dinosaurs. Everything from the colossal Shantungosaurus to the famous Parasaurolophus. The Hadrosaurs were in fact Iguanodon's closest relatives, and together they made up some of the most successful dinosaur species across the globe in the Cretaceous world. Outside of the Hadrosauriforms, several famous faces were present in the clade Iguanodontia. The most famous are perhaps Dryosaurus, Tenontosaurus, and Camptosaurus from North America, but from different locations. Iguanodontians are amongst the most diverse groups of dinosaurs, ranging massively in size and form, as well as time period and habitat. All of these animals were largely herbivorous, mainly quadrupedal animals that are well represented in the fossil record, and as a result, well known to science. So that was a rundown of the discovery, life, and behavior of Iguanodon, one of the very first dinosaurs to become known to science. Dinosaurs have been known to science for 200 years, and in that time we have come to understand so much about the biology and lives of the first few dinosaurs that were initially discovered in the early 1800s. Imagine where we might be with paleontology in another 200 years' time. How would our understanding of animals like Iguanodon change? Unfortunately, it won't be for us to know. All we can do is keep our fingers crossed that more discoveries will come to light much sooner than that.